Hello everyone. Before we start today's video, I just wanted to thank everyone for the support and feedback they have given me since I started the channel. This week we went past 1000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support. Today we are in Cyprus and in Britain for a case that is little known and received only a small amount of press coverage back in the 1950s. So sit back and let's open the case file. Stilau Christofi was born in the beautiful Mediterranean island of Cyprus in 1900. Her family were very poor and she did not receive much of an education. She was illiterate and at the age of 14 she married and later gave birth to a son, the couple called Stavros. Her relationship with her mother-in-law was bad and along with two other women, in 1925, when she was 25 years old, she was put on trial in Cyprus for killing her own mother-in-law with the help of two other women. The way Christophe murdered her mother-in-law was quite brutal. She shoved a burning piece of wood down her throat. At the trial in Cyprus, however, the three women covered for each other and Christophe was acquitted for lack of evidence. Her husband, however, left her after the trial. So now she was homeless and very poor and left to bring up her son Stavros alone. She did, however, bring him up well and Stavros grew up and got a job as a waiter in the country's capital, Nicosia. Stavros was a very good worker and in 1941, he secured work in London, England, as a waiter in Café de Paris, which was a very popular venue in the city. While working there, he met Hella Blecher, who was a German, and worked in the sales department of a clothing store close to Café de Paris. They went out and eventually got married. The couple were happy and worked hard to improve their prospects and after a while, managed to move to the very nice area of Hampstead in London. They had three children and life was good, especially for Stavros, who had worked hard, learnt English and was liked by everyone who knew him. In July 1953, Stavros' mother decided to visit the family in London. She hadn't seen her son for 12 years. At first, the family welcomed Christophe into their home. But as time went on, things started to deteriorate. There were rows between Hella and Christophe. Christophe blamed her daughter-in-law for everything. She didn't like the way Hella had decorated the house. She didn't like the way Hella brought up the children and the fact that Stavros was happy living in London and did not want to go back to Cyprus really bothered Christophe. Christophe had been living in London with her son, daughter-in-law and grandchildren for 12 months and Hella had pretty much had enough of her mother-in-law. She had had enough of the criticism. She told Stavros she was going to take the children to Germany for a visit and when she came back, she expected her mother-in-law to have gone back to Cyprus. Christophe, however, liked living in London and she had no intention of going back to her Mediterranean homeland. On Wednesday, July 28th, 1954, Stavros left for work. He said goodbye to his wife and then he said goodbye to his mother, who was in the living room. Hella had just put the children to bed and she was about to have a shower. Christophe heard the bathroom door close. So she went to the kitchen and took out 
the heavy metal tray from under the wooden stove. She crept upstairs and quietly opened the bathroom door. She saw Hella. Hella turned her head as the bathroom door opened and with one hard blow, Christophe hit her daughter-in-law in the head with the tray. Hella fell to the floor but was still alive. Christophe then dragged the unconscious body to the kitchen where she strangled her until she was dead by using a scarf. According to the forensic report, she did this with so much force that the scarf had penetrated Hella's skin. Christophe now had to cover her tracks. So she took off her son's wife's wedding ring and hid it in her bedroom. She then dragged the dead body out to the garden, where in an attempt to destroy the evidence, she put paraffin soaked newspaper round it and set it on fire. At the time, a neighbour, John Young, who was letting his dog out, noticed the fire in the back garden and could see what appeared to him to be a tailor's dummy being burnt. It was now one o'clock on Thursday morning. Christophe then ran into the street and raised the alarm by stopping a passing car. She shouted in her very limited English, please come, fire burning, children sleeping. The fire brigade arrived and put out the fire. They rescued the children who were still asleep and discovered the partly charred body of a woman in the garden. They were able to notice a red mark around the neck. Christophe had planned that the body would be too badly burnt to reveal anything. The police were then called and a search of the house revealed Hella's wedding ring wrapped in a piece of paper in Christophe's room. When questioned, she told officers that she had been asleep and had been awakened by the sound of two male voices downstairs. She went downstairs and had seen one man in the garden before she went to Hella's bedroom where there was no reply. She said she kept knocking on the door. She then saw the body on fire in the garden, so went for some water to try and put it out. Police did not buy her account of what happened and immediately arrested her. She was remanded in custody and after the post-mortem, she was charged with murder. Christophe's son, Stavros, and her lawyers advised her to plead insanity, but she refused, saying, I'm a poor woman of no education, but I'm not a mad woman. Dr. T. Christie, the principal medical officer at Holloway Prison, examined her and stated, but after observation of the prisoner since the 30th of July 1954, he had formed the conclusion that she was insane, but was medically fit to plead and stand trial. He found her to be suffering from a delusional disorder that made her fear that her grandchildren would not be brought up properly by Hella, and that she would in time be excluded from seeing them due to the clash of cultures between the two women. This seems a reasonable conclusion, but did it make her insane? Christophe's trial began at the Old Bailey in London on October the 25th, 1954, and lasted for several weeks. Despite the overwhelming evidence that included blood and paraffin on her own shoes, she kept protesting her innocence. The prosecution portrayed her as ungrateful, callous and domineering a woman who attacked an attractive, young, defenceless mother in the most gruesome manner, attacking a woman who had shown her nothing but hospitality and provided her a home. At the end of proceedings, the jury of 10 men and two women took just under two hours to find Christophe guilty. She was sentenced to death by hanging. Christophe showed no emotion when the verdict was read out. However, under the provisions of Criminal Lunatics Act of 1884, the Home Secretary had the duty to have a condemned prisoner examined by prison psychiatrists to see if there was concern over their sanity. The psychiatrist reported that the prisoner 
was not in their view insane and that in their view she did not suffer from any minor mental abnormality which would justify them in making any recommendation for the reprieve of the sentence on medical grounds. On the 12th of December it was announced that there would be no reprieve and the execution would be carried out on Wednesday the 15th of December. There was then a debate among British MPs on how that was possible. According to various accounts, six Labour members of Parliament questioned the death penalty in her case. One noted, the mere fact she did not claim insanity shows she is not of sound mind. Christophe was the last foreign woman and the second to last female ever hanged in Britain. There was very little press interest in her execution. Some say this was because she was middle-aged, unattractive and foreign. On the 13th of December 1954, 29 years after she had murdered her mother-in-law in Cyprus, Christophe was executed by hanging in Holloway Prison for murdering her daughter-in-law. Hello everyone, thank you so much for listening and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, leave a comment and hit the like button. And I will see you in the next brief case.